during my time here and also before here, um, I was fortunate enough to be involved in uh, three companies. Uh, the first company actually I founded with a good friend of mine was in Sweden. Uh, and then at that time, both of my PhD advisor and my postdoc advisors, they're inventors and they're very entrepreneurial, so I guess I got the bug. Uh, and so that was after my PhD. I spent a summer uh, in Sweden and we got a company started. And I think over the years, raised some, some $30 million. Uh, they quickly burned through, so that's a different story. Um, and so I have some reflections from that experience. Uh, that was back in the late 90s, so everything was easy from that perspective in terms of raising money. Uh, and then uh, more recently, we spun out a company uh, in Taiwan uh, using technology license from UW. And I have almost a completely different experience here than the one in Europe. Uh, cultures are very different, and everything is very different. Uh, and then also spun something out in Seattle uh, that we're doing things a little bit differently and give it a try and not try to get to uh, use venture capital money because that's um, no, always, not always nice. You know, there are many ways to make impact and translate into a product. You could do licensing, you can, there's many, many ways. But you know, the one that I focused on is to spin off a company assuming that whatever that you want to translate into a product requires resources. You know, it could be an instrument that you need to design and put out. It could be a product you need to tweak. In any case, those would require resources that uh, oftentimes you might need to spin off a company on. So uh, there's different routes to do that. Um, one of the routes to do it is you put money in yourself. Um, and there are plenty of people that do that in, in some cultures. I think that they would require you to do that. Um, angels, fans, and family, I think that's another route that you can do. I think that angels here is probably pretty good with IT type stuff and biotech, I am not so sure. Friends, friends and family, I would you know, generally stay away from if you want to keep friends and family. Uh, you can apply for SBIR funding, so that's another route, but that always takes a little, lot of long, long time to get. A venture capitalist, that um, uh, is a very um, good route to do uh, if you are, have the appetite for that. Um, but that's, I think, very you know, uh, traditional. And the two that I was involved in started out that way. And you know, there's definitely issues with that. And so uh, the one that I'm going to talk a little bit more about, which is the one that um, the most recent one that I was doing, and that actually um, we intentionally stay away from venture capitalists uh, and then try to uh, work with corporate partners and then get some corporate investments and so on and so forth. And the reason is that you know, if you start a company, at least the experience that I have, you know, the fortunate thing is that I don't have to do too much. So that's not me. Uh, that's somebody else that's kind of you know, got stuck there. And that is, there's really a lot of stuff that you have to worry about. Uh, and so if you go through the list, if I just kind of think about it, you know, you have to specify your product. You have to do your market research. You just don't have the know-how. Many of the market research that companies you know, do is through their users and so on and so forth. If you don't have a distribution channel to get feedback from users, sometimes it's hard. If you spent 5,000, 10,000 on a market report, um, that usually is not very good. I know that because you know, for some of those reports that I saw that they charge 10,000, 15,000, they interview me and I know nothing about the fields. <laughs> There's a number of things from validation, manufacturing, uh, sourcing, supply chain, you have to have you know, different risk management, you have to cost down your instrument, quality control, uh, so just to get a product out. Then you have to business side with distribution, you have to be able to service your user. You will be surprised and you know, the kind of story that I was told uh, is that you know, I think 90% of the users are very intelligent, but you'll be amazed you know, some of the things that are out there and how stupid somebody can be. Uh, freedom to operate, IP type stuff. Managing growth is a big thing because I, I know uh, a number of the colleagues or friends that I have that they raise a lot of money and they, you know, literally a lot of money. And they were hiring 20 to 30 people a month um, for, you know, to build up within a year, you know, to be a big enough to really drive it. And managing growth is just, you know, tough. It, you know, the existing people have to spend time interviewing so the productivity goes way down. 
Uh, and so then you have documentation, those kind of stuff. When we're trying to get something through FDA, I was surprised how much kind of documentation that they're doing. It's just, you know, it's just insane. So I think there's a lot of advantages, therefore, to partner with a corporate uh, partner because if you can do that, you don't have to worry about any of those in some sense because they have the distribution, they know what the product is, they give you feedback. You don't have to, in some sense, reinvent the wheel and start all of those from scratch. You don't have somebody handing you a check and then say, hey, you know, go ahead and try to do all of those and doing all of those is pretty tough. And so I think there's a lot of value to do a, a partnership and get some equity investment from a big company because you, don't, you, know, you really can focus on the things that you, maybe you're good at, which is the research, the science, and you don't have to worry about a lot of the rest of it. Having said that, I think that you know, there's definitely a lot of um, things that you have to worry about. You know, first thing is that you know, if you want to have a company that you work with, they're, um, you know, they're a big enterprise and you know, they can step on you and then that's the end of that. So you have to be really careful uh, when you interact with them and the most important thing is to understand how the company works. At a big corporation, I, you know, I, I interacted with many, many big corporations, every single one of them works differently. You know, I can give you an example. There's one that we have a very close relationship with. Um, then um, they are pretty good. I mean, everybody uh, in the corporation get along with everybody else. If there's some idea, they tell somebody else. And so it was really nice. And then I just had a conference call with a big pharmaceutical company out of France. And so we said, OK, I have this idea with the rare cells. And I know you have a big oncology department. You know, I I'm picking their drug. and so. The first, and they're, you know, they're actually, um, I know quite well, and we used, you know, we're friends, and so on and so forth. So he was very honest with me, and he said that if you want your idea to go in our company, the last thing you want is for me to tell them. Because mm -hmm. if they get that, you know, they're getting input from the other divisions, uh, they just completely shut it down. So then I ask, what do you do? Um, can you just give me the contact so I can just drop them an email and a note and follow up? And he says, uh, yes, that's the other way that they will completely ignore you and not follow your idea. And so, so, so what do you do? So, well, let me do something because the best thing you do is that you have to sort of very subtly let them self-discover your thing. And then so they, if they think that they discovered it, they're going to really drive hard to pursue it. And I said, well, you know, sounds like my teenager son. So it's... it's um, but every corporation works differently, and you really need to understand how it works. And if you want to you know, have a long working relationship, you need to understand that. You need to have good support from scientists. You need to have um, good support from upper management, and so on and so forth. There are definitely pitfalls when you negotiate with big companies, um, and there are many. Uh, and so every case is different, so it's difficult to generalize. And so I think that for me, there's probably two things that probably is general for all the big companies. The first thing is that it's a big company, so it's really slow. And so, uh, and you know, you kind of really need to know what slow means because you cannot just say that it's slow and then well, let's see what happens. You kind of have to understand how they work so that you know, if you think enough time has passed, you give them some time, but then you follow up and so on and so forth. But even then it's slow. But you need to kind of you know, be persistent about it and really try to uh, work with them. Uh, but then you know, there's a definitely a process and they can be quite slow. The other thing is that there are people in the company that you work really well with, the scientists, the business development, the marketing people, and so on and so forth. And in every company, there's going to be some boogeyman or group of people that is going to almost kill your deal. And so um, you have to really watch out for those people and understand who they are. In most companies, the fortunate thing is that you know, they group them together and then it's easy to identify. You know, they're called general counsels or attorneys or lawyers. So, uh, but you need to be aware, you know, they basically have very wide elbows and you just kind of have to 
anticipate that and not get put off too much. I think the nice thing, you know, after all those is that in a company, when you start a company, you know, you get um, gratifications from different things. For me, I think is that, you know, in an academic lab, in a lab, as a PI of a lab, a lab is you know, it's an extremely energy dissipating system, meaning that you put a lot of energy in and the moment you stop, you know, it goes to crap. Uh, and, and so, but, you know, the output is that, you know, you never be able to grow a lab, so to speak. You maintain it and your product is, you know, the papers and the people and so on. Whereas in the company, regardless of what financial return you have, I think it's very gratifying to see you know, the fact that you, know, you have a seed, you know, for example, the company in Sweden, because they raised so much money, you know, after I'm done with them for a year, basically you know, financial return is zero. Uh, but then it's very gratifying to see that from the ideas that you have, regardless of what happened on the business side, you know, there are products that came out from your idea. Uh, you know, they're selling things to top 10 of the 12 farmers, I think. And so you're growing an entity that originated from somewhere. I think that's another motivation that is very good to have, um, at least, you know, it's kind of a reward.